Hi, beautiful souls. It's Tan back here again today with you on this Astrology, Human Design, and Jinkies channel. And, and today we're going to be talking and diving deeper into a Jinky 61. So let's begin our transmission of Jinky 61 today by, of course, looking at an overview of this archetype. So Jinky 61 spans the degrees of Capricorn from 2045 degrees to 26 degrees and 22 minutes. And it moves from the shadow called psychosis to the gift of inspiration to the city of sanctity. The holies of holies is what Richard Rudd calls it. In the codon ring, this gene key is part of the ring of Gaia and is associated with the amino acid isoleucine. Hope I pronounced that correctly. In the 64 I Ching hexagram, this hexagram is called inner truth. It is wind over lake. The depths are not affected by the dancing mind. Sanctuary is kept alive by the constant breath of life. In the dream arc totem, the bird is the wren, the life key animal is the black panther, and the fear key underworld creature is the locust. The programming partner of this gene key is gene key 62 or human design gate 62, which is cancer energy because cancer is opposite of Capricorn and the programming partner is the opposite point on the zodiac wheel. And I highly recommend that you also watch the video for your programming partner because that's going to give a better insight into how you can balance off the energies of the 61 if it's excessive in your life or missing in your life in some ways. In human design, this gate is located in the crown center or the head center connected to gate 24 in the Ajna via a channel called the channel of contemplation or awareness. Moving from the shadow of blankness to the gift of contemplation to the city of mystery. Ooh. So if you have this gene key in your chart somewhere, you are going to be somebody who is a natural mystic type of person, meaning that all things that are mysterious, um, spiritual, sometimes you can call it, but I don't want to, I don't really think so much as spiritual as things of the unknown. These are very fascinating topics to you and you can find a lot of peace by diving into the mysteries of life and you can become somebody that uh, we can say it either inspires people into also trying to dive into these mysteries or just pressuring people into diving certain into these mysteries depending on how you use the energy but you'll have that about you and you can some you can also be somebody that's kind of a little bit stuck in your mind um and trying to answer questions of the unknown so that can be fun to do but it can also have sort of like a, a shadow state of it there where you can kind of get lost in your minds and in your um we can say in rummaging rummaging on these kind of like going around in your mind yeah trying to make sense of things that are mysterious, unknown, spiritual, you can also say. And sometimes it's not very healthy because it uh, it can um, it can take you, you can become that mystic that is out of the body. So embodiment would be important for you because if you are a mystic who is out of your body, then what can happen is that you can experience health issues that can come up because you are not taking care of your body. So before we dive further into, you know, the beautiful potential of Jinky 61, let's look at the shadow first, as we all do. And the shadow here is called psychosis. So what does that mean when you're in the shadow of psychosis? We tend to um, associate the word psychosis with the ability, the inability to be in contact with reality. And so the thing is, if you have this Jinky without its programming partner, without Jinky 62, you can definitely you'll be a little bit more um, extreme in being out of touch with the reality in some way or another in your life. But if you have the 62 balancing off the 61, then that's, um, yeah, like that's a balancing energy. You can kind of bring awareness to you when you are out of touch with reality. And Richard Russ does describe psychosis as the current state of humanity as we see it today. This is mass collective psychosis. It is existing everywhere in the world that we currently see. People in the world nowadays are losing touch with reality. 
One of the major causes of why we lose touch with reality is because we are trying to answer, and if you have, this is more true for you, is you're trying to answer this one question. And the question is, why? The thing about answering something that begins with why is that it immediately puts you into the limits of your awareness. It doesn't allow you to expand beyond your awareness. Because the moment we want to answer why to something, that is when we kind of resort to facts and trying to find facts to support the why of the question. So I think there's um, a, a difference between asking why and between asking what else. Okay, so by why here, we're not talking about like, oh, I want to dig deeper into something. I want to know more. It's not about that. It's like, why does this, you know, happen? kind of like that um, question. So what happens when we're so stuck on this question of why with you <laughs> in the shadow of psychosis and you're really stuck on this question of why, you will, it will be that much easier for you to believe people, gurus, um, teachers, any authority outside of yourself who is promising to deliver the answer to the question that you have of why. And religion is one of the most promising deliveries of these questions. Because these why questions are deep philosophical, spiritual questions, and religion promises to deliver the answer to this question of why through mainly God, or that God has the answer, or the answer is God, and so on and so forth, not to disrespect any religion out there. It's just more about the addiction, uh, the obsession, and the attachment to something that could provide this answer of why that becomes the issue or the shadow of psychosis. So the what happens when you become addicted or attached or obsessed with an entity outside of yourself that can answer your question of why you fall into worship. Now, I think there's worship and devotion is a beautiful concept, but what happens in this shadow of psychosis is that we worship something so much that we put ourselves in a victim posi position in comparison to that entity, that guru, that teacher that we worship. And because you're putting yourself as a victim, you immediately guarantee that this low energy frequency, this shadow state will truly manifest in your life. And the difference here between the beautiful form of worship or devotion that I was talking about and this kind of worship of psychosis is that devotion and the beautiful form of worship means that you allow yourself to become one with that entity, that unity that you are devoted to. Um, and that you yourself become the worship and the worshiper at the same time. But here, when you have this type of psychosis worship, you become separate. There's a duality between you and the entity. There's no unity happening. Yeah, the reason why you fall into worship rather than the beautiful form of, of devotion and worship <laughs> that I mentioned while you fall into the psychosis worship is ultimately stemming from this hidden agenda, this underlying motivation of pressure. It's just really coming from that pressure of the mind to find out why. And if you really think about it, it's really quite, um, it's like a child or it's like something that's, uh, we can, I'm going to even use the word immature here, where there's a pressure of the mind and you don't know what to do with that pressure. Maybe you can't sleep because you can't find the answer to the question why. Maybe you are not able to concentrate on your work or your studies because your mind is thinking about something else. But really, and, and you allow that you know, to kind of overwhelm your life when really all you need to do, one of the things that you can do is just allow yourself to be embodied. Allow yourself to feel into your body, to drop back into your body rather than letting that mind overwhelm you and falling into the pressure. So at the worst possible scenario here with psychosis, we begin, you may begin to have some kind of like mental breakdown that can happen in the shadow of psychosis. Um, sometimes we don't resort to religion with this gene key. Sometimes you resort to science. But the thing about using science to answer some of the mysteries of life and the question of why is that science is limited. Science is based on empirical evidence and based on statistics and data and um, testing out certain hypotheses to provide factual answers. But the thing about when you are testing out certain hypotheses is that you are testing it via the tools that you 
are, that we currently have in the world in order to test out your hypothesis, which means that we are limited by the tools that we have. And to limit yourself to say that I only believe in what our tools in the modern day can test, it doesn't make any sense because there, are, you know, we're not yet at that stage of technology. We can say in our in humanity where we can have these tools that can test things that are bigger than what we can already test. So to limit yourself to technology or to the tools that we have that can um, aid science is really a narrow way of, and um, a lazy way, or even a um, a, a, a sort of like a lazy shortcut to just trying to find any answer to that question of why that you have, even though it may not be the truth, as long as it just gives you that instant gratification of satisfaction of answering why. So we can have two kinds of shadows when we talk about um, the shadow of psychosis. We can have a repressed and a reactive, and you will have both if you have this gene key. You will switch from both the reactive and the repressive. So in the repressive shadow, this is called disenchanted. So this is when you live your life in a conformist way. You hide, actually, from the question that you have inside of you. So you you suppress the need to find the answer to the question why altogether, and you don't even pay attention to this question of why that you have, because you have to understand that the shadow is the pathway to the gift for all of the gene keys. So we have to um, absorb ourselves and be obsessed with the shadow for a certain period of life before we can kind of transcend into the gift, right? But here, we're even suppressing that shadow. We know that there, you know that there's this question of why but you're like nope it's not important it doesn't matter i don't need to find out any kind of answers to these mystical things in life i will just carry my life out in the way that i'm supposed to that is societally acceptable that my parents would that my family if your family is um a little bit more scientific or society uh, yeah a little bit more scientific that i would just kind of follow that path so you just choose the traditional route in education in religion or in science without questioning why you why these paths existed so deep but deep down that question still remains the question of why still remains and because it's still there inside of you it can cause you to have a very restless type of um, inner nature feeling very unfulfilled and disenchanted mm. we can also have the reactive shadow of psychosis which is called fanatical so, of course, this is kind of like what we were talking about previously. You just become obsessed with the question of why. So you will follow any leader, structure, creed, um, guru who is promising to deliver you that question of why. So what you're actually doing is you're placing an intellectual answer above an intellectual question to a non-intellectual, non-logical, mysterious um, scenario or situation. And... Once that guru provides you with whatever answer they provided you with, you just build your entire reality around that answer. And you can turn into sort of a little bit of like a some kind of missionary that may not be like a religious missionary, but it can be a missionary for some kind of belief or lifestyle or way of being. And it can become quite fanatical. But deep down, what lies behind this type of behavior is a deep anger and insecurity about not knowing. So how can we turn this or move from this shadow of psychosis into the gift of inspiration? Richard Rudd talks about the root word of inspiration. He says that it, it came, so the word inspiration is derived from an ancient Indo-European word for breath, and it's connected to the Latin spiritus, also meaning breath. So in this, um, because of this explanation, we can see that the word inspiration means the gradual releasing of your inner breath through the fabric of your reality and out into the world instead of the other way around where you're trying to extract something from the outer reality and living that internally. And because you breathe correctly, because you do these breath works, you're able to dismantle the inner realities that have been built by your mind to allow new forms of inspiration and creativity to enter, to allow your inner truth to enter. So when you have this pressure of this answer, why? Instead of trying to search for um, somebody else to give you a logical intellectual answer to this question, you instead turn this 
unanswerable question and an un- and um, the mysterious answer that could be anything into inspiration you get creative with it and this happens because you allow the inner answer the inner truth inside of you to come through and your inner truth your inner answer is always very inspirational and very creative and it has never been said before and has never been answered before by anyone else outside of yourself. Once this happens, you will see that your whole life, your destiny, the path of your destiny has been, will be completely altered. It almost seems like you're just going down this path, um, this road where you are always taught or listening to other people with what you should be doing, um, how you should be living. But the moment you stop and take a breath and allow the inner breath to flow through you, allow the inner reality inside of you, the inner truth to come through you, the course of your direction, the, the direction of your life will just completely change. And you're completely living in a new reality, something completely different from what the way you have been living before. And your awareness will change completely in the way that it operates. So this is this gift of inspiration is truly a creative gift. And this is creativity is what will enable humanity to step out of their psychosis. Gosh, (laughs) I don't have this gene key, but I have the 24. I have gate 24 in my chart, um, which is hanging and it wants to meet gate 61, right? And what I see like with people who have Gene Key 61 or Gate 61 in their chart is that they don't really filter what they hear from outside of them. They just kind of are, they're easily, um, maybe I'll just use the word brainwash here, but they're easily believable or manipulated by anybody who is willing to offer them a release to some kind of pressure that they have to some unanswerable question. Maybe it's a question of why, maybe it's some other questions. And, you know, being in the the spiritual community and being an astrologer and, you know, when you get questions that are coming from clients, there are always these questions that I'm like, why do you ask that question about yourself and your chart? Because that doesn't have an answer. Um, you can try to squeeze it out of me and I can try to rationalize it for you. But really, do you want my answer? <laughs> because my answer is just my answer. Um, it's not, there's no truth um, in the answer that I can give you. And a lot of these um, questions are, I'm going to say, are about twin flames, for example. Um, or, yeah, this is a question that I get a lot. Like, when am I going to so on, so on, so forth? I mean, of course, you can pull up a bunch of different charts and look at when something is going to happen in your life. But why do you ask that question? Like the real um, triggering thing is, or the real question you have to ask yourself is, why are you asking that question in the first place? Is there some kind of insecurity inside of you where you cannot live in the present moment and enjoy the present moment? Or there's you're trying to escape from something in your present moment that you need that answer in the future? Because if that's the case, and that tends to be a lot of the case with a lot of these questions that... Um, people ask, I don't think I want to give you that answer because that doesn't help you at the deep part of yourself to really change and transform yourself from within. I can give you an answer about when something's going to happen in your life. That doesn't mean that you're going to be less insecure. That doesn't mean that some of your traumas and your fears that you have that causes you to ask this question is going to go away. So there's a whole um, a world built around this like mass psychosis that we currently have in the world today. It's just really interesting. But the thing, so here's the thing about when you step into inspiration and you move from psychosis into inspiration is that you still have these questions, right? You have questions of like, okay, when is something, something going to happen to me? But instead of searching for an astrologer to answer that question for you, you begin to get creative. And maybe that creativity is coming first from, hmm, like inquiring or looking into yourself. Why am I asking this question? Or maybe that creativity is coming from you finally living in the present moment and doing what you love to do right now instead of waiting for that thing to happen in the future and you just manifest things in your life because you're living in the present moment or you just turn that you know question into um, a poetry, something that you write or you turn it into works of art or something creative instead of trying to find the answer to that. And then by doing that, you 
discover more about yourself. You grow as a person, you evolve as a person, rather than just having some kind of answer be flopped in front of you. And then, yeah, you're still, the reason behind why you ask that question is still there. The insecurity is still there. One of the key points to being able to go from psychosis to inspiration, Richard Rudd mentions that it is patience. So here it is. The moment you have that pressure to find an answer, you don't just go searching for somebody to provide you with that answer right away because you're so insecure. You have patience. Creativity comes with patience and it is way more rewarding, trust me, than to have an answer be fed to you by some kind of astrologer or some kind of fortune teller. And Richard Rose does say that when you have patience, when you're kind of waiting for the creativity to hit, you may fall into a depressed state. That doesn't mean that you're going to have depression in the clinical sense of the word, but you can fall into a melancholic depressed state because that is going to always be the precursor to creativity. Creativity comes with melancholy. However, at some point, you will reach a plateau in your in waiting. And once you reach that plateau, you will be able to reach a heightened state of being. This heightened state of being can also be um, described as a paradigm shift. Um, so it's a completely different way of thinking and looking at the world that is truly creative because it's coming from your inner truth. Creativity is coming from the word creation and creation is the birth of something. And this is the birth of something new inside of you. There will be originality of expression. There will be originality in general of thinking. Then your hold on reality as you know it will currently begin to slip away as you have these paradigm shifts. So paradigm shifts requires patience. And patience will allow you to transcend anxiety and transcend depression. So this gene key is part of the codon ring called the codon ring of Gaia. And of course, Gaia is Mother Earth. And this gene key, when it comes to Gaia, represents the consciousness of Gaia. And this consciousness is the awareness that we are all united and we are all one in our being. And when you're in this gift of um, inspiration, you understand and you allow your evolution to happen. And that evolution can only happen from inside of you. If somebody's feeding you with some answers to your questions, there is no need for you to look inwards anymore. And there is no ability for you to evolve. But we have to evolve as a species, as um, a collective, because once we evolve as a collective, because we're all united and whole and one, we will allow and mother nature will evolve with us. And we are, you know, we're like the, the neurons of mother nature, right? We're the sensory um, neurons of, of Gaia. And as our neurons begin to evolve, the whole of Gaia begins to evolve altogether as one. So when we step into the city of sanctity, what does that look like? And like I mentioned with my Jinky videos, I don't want to talk too much about the city because the city is that energy frequency where you're kind of enlightened and you're kind of like Buddha, you know, Nirvana, and you don't have to really do anything anymore. You will, you will have the city dawn upon you as you travel the journey of your gift. It will naturally dawn upon you. So the city of sanctity is described as this state of being when all of your mental activity stops and only the inner truth resides. And this is the gene key that is associated with enlightenment. It is the, um, the gene key that is an example of what it means to become truly enlightened. So that pressure of awareness, of the question of why and all of the other questions that you have inside of you, it just disappears. There is no more of that question of why anymore. And all the other questions that emerge from the question of why, like how or who or what, also ceases. However, pressure still exists and the pressure has to go somewhere. And now the pressure has moved from the brain, the crown, the head center in human design, to the solar plexus, which is the center of your emotions. So if you look at the human design body graph, you will see that the crown center is only connected to one other center, which is the ajna. There's only one way that pressure can kind of go with regards to energy flow. But when you look at the solar plexus in human design, you will see that it's connected to the throat, connected to the will center, connected to the sacral, connected to the root. The solar plexus center is able to and able to allow pressure to be delivered. 
all over the body. Richard Rudd describes that this frequency can vibrate not just through your body, but it allows it to vibrate out as frequencies into the entire universe. Although you are still in a human vehicle, but you will be in a human vehicle that is manifesting pure universal awareness. When you are in the city of sanctity, you kind of exude this aura of holiness about you. You exude an unearth, unearthly essence. The, you become the type of people that other people will devote themselves to and worship in the, of course, positive form of worship in this case, which means that they can become one with you. If you are still in this physical form and you are in this city of sanctity, you live life without the need to find any answers. It is about becoming the mystery of who you are. You understand that life is a mystery, enlightenment itself is a mystery, and that even your own inner truth is a mystery. And you love it. You love the mystery. So that's going to be my transmission of Jinky 61. So if you have this archetype somewhere in your chart, then do comment below and let us know what your experiences have been. Maybe it's in your human design. Maybe it's in your birth chart. If it falls between these degrees of Capricorn that I mentioned with regards to um, Jinky 61. And yeah, comment below. Let us know what your experiences have been. If you like this video, then give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. If you haven't, if you already subscribed, then thank you very much, beautiful souls, for coming along on these astrology, human design, jinky journeys. Please, I can't believe it. It has been a long journey. It's been almost a three-year journey <laughs> of making all of these 64 jinky videos, but I've enjoyed every moment of it. And um, if you like my channel and the effort that I've put into making these videos for you guys, then feel free to give me a super thanks. I would really appreciate that. You can open that. It's in the tabs below the screen somewhere. And if you're interested in readings or courses, then head over to my astrology website where me and my sister Soul Trice would love to guide you on your self-discovery journeys. So that's going to be it for today, beautiful souls. Sending you lots of love and sanctity. Bye.